All right, and then we will get into our presentation today. Okay, so our presentation today is going to be on the topic of enhancing ATSPM with trajectory-based corridor level signal synchronization performance index. This is something that Zong Tian has been working on for a number of years, you know, perfecting and improving um, every time I've seen this. So now we're integrating uh, CSPI with ATSPM, and it's really oriented around how do we improve some of the, what are not necessarily direct measures of quality of, of coordination with simply the percent of arrivals on red and using the Purdue coordination diagrams. So how do we maybe come to more quantitative approaches uh, so that we can know more about what's happening on the corridor? So CSPI integrated with ATSPM is going to be a really um, innovative way to accomplish this. So that's the topic today. Our presenter is Zong Tian. Uh, he is the director and a professor at the University of Reno in Nevada, and he's the director of the Center for Advanced Transportation Education and Research. Uh, so with that, Song, I'm going to hand off to you. That was a very uh, contracted presentation. If you want to do more of a self-introduction, please certainly take the time to do that, and I'm turning things over to you. Okay. Can you see my screen? Oh, let me stop sharing. I don't know that I see it yet. Oh yeah, okay, we can see it. Okay. okay I'm gonna turn my camera off and mute. Thank you, Adi. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity for um, inviting me to make this presentation. Now, as Adi um, mentioned, this is a, a mainly focusing on using trajectories. You know, how can we enhance what we have already have? Uh, we have already had with uh, ATSPM. So I'm I'm sure the audience of this this group is already very familiar with uh, ATSPM. So I don't have to say too much about it. You know, ATSPM it is a major I would say uh, innovation in the area of a traffic signal control. It provides a matrix of measures. But what I'm going to focus on today is on signal coordination. So before I start my presentation, I'd like just to uh, throw out a couple of questions. Maybe these are the questions you really want to know, or maybe you have already know uh, some of the answers. So, but let me just, you know, throw this out. You know, for signal co coordination, traffic progression, right, ATSPM, the, one of the main measures is the person arrival on red or a person arrival on green or the Purdue coordination diagram. So the question is, is this sufficient for evaluating arterial signal coordination and progression? So that's my first question. The second one is, now, what is missing in our current practice on conducting before after signal timing evaluations? All right, we, after we finish the signal retiming project, we do before after studies. We compare the before and after. So what element that is missing? The third question is about, you know, is or will signal coordination timing optimization be part of the ATM's scope? I throw out this question because I heard from quite a few people that are saying that uh, once you have ATSPM, you don't need any other systems. You don't need adaptive systems. You don't need other tools. So the ATSPM should provide the solutions how to improve the signal timing. Uh, so that's, uh, I heard from quite a few people. And so these are the questions that I, you know, I just, Put, put up there um, before my presentation. So hopefully after I finish my presentation, you'll figure out some of the answers or at least to gain a better understanding of these questions. So with that, this is what I'm gonna talk about today. So 
you see the first item, actually ATSPM, what we are all know familiar is I call it detector phase based, events based uh, ATSPM. So that's, we are all very familiar. I categorize the second one is called trajectory based because now we can get vehicle trajectories automatically. And if we use the trajectories for performance evaluation, so that can also be called ATSPM. It's just not based on the detector phase events that we're familiar with. Instead, it's based on vehicle trajectories collected automatically. And I'm going to talk about the, the corridor synchronization performance index, um, or I call it the quality of the signal timing index, really for mainly for uh, signal coordination. And then the third item is I want to look at if there's any correlation between person arrival on red or person arrival on green versus trajectory based stops. So these are the things that I'm going to cover for today. Just very quick review of uh, ATSPM, right? I already mentioned person to arrive on red, person to arrive on green, the Purdue coordination diagram. This is what are, are the main measures produced by ATSPM for uh, signal coordination evaluation. I think by now, we should realize these kind of measures is a called I call it a link based measure. Okay, you look at each intersection approach, and then you get a person arrive on green or person arrive on red. So it's not an arterial level performance. I know we can try to aggregate these you know the different links, different approaches to come up with an arterial performance. But that's something I don't think we have that yet, you know, how to really aggregate them. And the, the second, you know, I I think we don't have really an established criteria for judging what number is a good or not good. So is, per, let's say just person arrive on red, is 40% good? or 30% good, I don't think we have reached a consensus yet on what number should be considered a good one. So this is how I see the, I would say the current ADSPM in the limitations for evaluating a corridor level, arterial level, signal coordination uh, timing. And this is one example. Um, Shared, you know, this is a, a, a from a report done by Utah DOT. I appreciate uh, Mark shared the, their report. So this is one of the examples of before after. So here is the corridor. Okay, so the percent arrival on green is re recorded before and after the signal retiming. The two directions. This is one direction. This is the other direction. So the percent arrival on green. Okay indicated here and after the retiming some of them got improved the percent improvement some got um, uh, worse than before so by looking the number uh, not the numbers like this maybe we can you know based on our judgment we can make some kind of uh, observations i would say overall the improvement is more than those where it's uh, degraded. So this is a very empirical judgment, right? It's uh, what what if you know some of them got improved, some some of them got got worse, and the numbers are very close. Then how can we make a judgment? It's just yeah, not uh, um, it's not very easy, right? To uh, really combine all these different links, different numbers. And should we take the average, simply take the average? Should we take the weighted average? Uh, so this is something I think we still um, try to explore. But by the way, you know, to me, 
the percent arrival on green by, lo by looking at these numbers is, is already very good to me. You know, 69%, 60%, 79%, those percent arrival on green. So I'm, wonder I'm just wondering uh, why signal retiming uh, was, is even needed if you got already got uh, such good performance. But anyway, I, I just want to use this example to indicate, you know, we have a lot of numbers and it's, it's reported by each link. But how can we come up with a quarter level performance? So this is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, it's called a trajectory based core, uh, arterial performance. What well, trajectory is not something new, right? Um, we have been using floating car um, method for conducting before after studies. So this is even up to date is still the most popular, I would say the most, most popular method um, for before after studies, floating car travel run trajectories. Okay. But there's, we do have one agency which is Orange County in California. So they have what is called the Corridor Synchronization Performance Index, CSPI. So based on these travel runs, the trajectories, and they gave it a score. So, so a score that you were divided by different levels. So is this excellent, good, uh, very good, not so good, poor, something like that. So Orange County does have some something. They have been using this corridor synchronization performance index for their regional signal retiming projects for the past 10 years. And I'm going to talk about you know, how this method works. How, to, how do you come up with the, the score? And basically we also did some enhancement based on what Orange County already uh, has. So this is the Orange County's uh, methodology. You basically through the trajectories or, or floating car travel runs. Um, each run you collect what is the average speed going through the entire arteria. What is the green red ratio? Red means a stop, green means no stop. So how many on average, how many signals you passed before you make a stop? And then the thir third one is called stops per mile. And each one of the measures has a corresponding score. So let's just use, you know, this is the highest you can achieve. If you are average speed, you, you achieve above 34 mile per hour, you get 36 points. If your green red ratio is five or more, you get 40 points, okay? And then you, you, you add these th three individual scores, you get a total score. But if you look at this methodology, okay, the highest possible score is 109, if you add to the highest possible. This methodology, it doesn't really show, you know, you achieve the speed, but what, what, you, what is the speed limit or free flow speed? So that is not uh, uh, included in the calculation. And also in you know, the green red ratio basically is a person stop. It doesn't really differentiate between if it's a short stop, a long stop, a stop five seconds versus a stop 30 seconds. Obviously they carry different weight, right? But this current method doesn't really differentiate that. And based on the total score, this is there, they call it tiers. Okay, if you achieved above 80, you get a tier one. So that's already very good. You probably shouldn't spend more funding on those corridors. It's already very good, signal coordination. Tier two, 70, 80. Below 50 is tier five. So this is where you probably you should uh, pay most attention how to improve the corridor. So this is a Orange County's CSPI calculation. So at UNR, we, you know, we did a research, we tried to just using the same idea um, 
try to enhance what they already have. And this trajectory based this kind of score does represent a corridor level performance. So unlike the percent, arri uh, percent arrival on red, which is a link based performance. So here in a, is, a, is a case, this arterial 11 signals, okay, 11 signals, and these are two trajectories. So the first trajectory made one short stop here and then a long stop here, a not very long stop, and then short stop, short stop, short stop. So out of 11 signals, if you have this experience, so what do you think the quality? versus the second one, a short stop, and then a medium stop, a slowdown, and a short stop. So based on Orange County's method, they will give a score, right? So the first one, you get 65 points. The second one, you get 90, 92. 92 is above 80, which is tier one. So that's pretty good. 65 is, is above 50, um, so it's not the best, but it's also not that terrible. So these kind of scores basically gave you an indication of the performance of the, uh, of the entire arterial. Then if you gather a lot of these kind of trajectories, you, you just take the average of those, and then you can uh, have a, a performance measure, a performance score, basically. So what you are here, uh, what we did was uh, similar, but the score is based on a hundred scale. That's, it's a lot easier to interpret. And based on the, the, the score, there's a corresponding grade. So in this case, the first one received 70 points, which is a C minus. minus. The second one received 95, which is A. So See, both methodology indicate that the second trajectory is a, is a very good, good, good run. The first one needs improvement. So that's basically how uh, this methodology works. Now, we want to automate, uh, automate this, this trajectory collection, right? You don't, you don't want, to, want to manually go there to do the floating car runs. So now with the technology advancement, we do have automatic data sources. And it's called Connect Vehicles, right? The company is, uh, yeah, so we're all familiar with the uh, Inrix. So there's another company called Weijo, if you, uh, you may or may not know, which is similar. So the, the vehicles, the newer vehicles, they have the GPS embedded in the car. Every time you start engine, they start to track you. But they get the, the, the data we used is from Weijo. They only provide the raw data. Each data point, and there's ID and the location and the speed information. And then we have to develop a program. It's called STAP to extract, based on the raw data, the trajectories I want for a particular corridor for a particular time period. So this program not only gets the trajectories, we can also lay the trajectories on top of the time space diagram. Okay, keep in mind the time space diagram is now the actual time space diagram recorded from the controllers. It's the timing plan. So basically these are, um, assume everything goes to max. Okay, so this is the timing plan you developed in a uh, program in the controller. And then based the trajectory, once we retract, uh, extract the trajectory because each tra trajectory has a time step. And then we can lay on top of the time space diagram. And you can see in you know, the two directions, the blue is one direction, the green is the, the other direction. The trajectories, most of them align with the timing uh, very well. Of course, there are some that uh, are suspicious things like here. Okay, that doesn't mean this is wrong. Could be early return from the side street, or could be a transition, or could be a clock issue. But the majority, the majority trajectories match the time space diagram pretty well. 
Okay, I at the beginning, uh, ID mentioned uh, version five ATSPM is going to have the uh, time space diagram. So that is the one feature I always wanted. So once you, you can plot actual time space diagram, you can still make a lot of good observations. Uh, if there's a good band, you know uh, the progression is probably pretty good. If there's no band at all, you know the vehicle will stop there. So that is one feature definitely is going to significantly enhance the ATS PM applications. By the way, this is the uh, corridor in Reno based on these travel trajectory runs. And this is what uh, the Orange County CSPI says, uh, green per ride ratio, okay? The most important is the total score. So there were two directions, right? And uh, so it's, it's all while above 80, which is a tier one. This is uh, the UNR's method. For the uh, northbound, got a B plus close to A. Uh, southbound, they got A. So that means um, northbound, maybe you can still improve. So now, you know, goes back to my earlier question, the current practice on doing before after studies. So what element that is missing? Our current practice, you know, the before after can tell me if you have done a good job. You know, you reduce travel time, reduce the stop, but still it doesn't give me that indication. Is this best you can do? Can we still improve? A CSPI will tell you that. Okay, if you have done the best, you, 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 you already got A, that's the best probably you can do. If you get something not close to A, so maybe there's still room you can improve. So this is the advantage, major advantage, the CSPI over the simple before after runs. Okay, so the next I'm going to spend uh, actually most of the time to talk about the percent arrival on red or on percent arrival on green from ATSPM versus trajectory based stops. Do they really have a good correlation? So I picked this uh, arterial segment in Las Vegas. The reason I picked that is that uh, in, in Las Vegas is one of the earlier cities who implement ATSPM, but they don't have a coverage for the entire network. So only a few um, arterial segments, they can report person arrival on red and the portal coordination diagram. And so this is the Flamingo a segment on Flamingo, which is a major arterial. This is where they have ATSPM to be able to report person arrival on red. Uh, even that, you can see there are two intersections, one here, one there. There's no number because uh, the detector probably is not working. So it's reporting 100%, which I know is, is not correct. So that's why it's not showing there. Okay, going eastbound, these are the percent arrival on red. Okay, percent arrival on red. This is going westbound, percent arrival on red. You know, again, because I really don't know what number is considered a good one or not so good one. So I just arbitrarily picked 50%. Okay, if a person arrival on red is above 50%, I mark them on, uh, in red, okay? Uh, but intuitively you can see going eastbound is better than going westbound, right? So going westbound there are three locations, person arrival on red, that is above 50%. So this is the information you can get from ADSPM. And then my next question is, okay, what, what, what is causing this? So how can, I, how can we improve? So what I did was I look at the trajectories. These are the floating car trajectories. Okay, the two directions, okay, from the bottom to the up is westbound. Okay, from top to the bottom is the eastbound. So let's just look at the westbound direction, okay? Just look at the one direction. There's no data here. This intersection going westbound reported 59% arrival on red by ATSPM. 
the trajectories, six trajectories. Okay, there are six trajectories. Look at the going this direction, okay? Six trajectories, five of them stopped. So it's kind of uh, makes sense, right? So the percent arrival on red versus the trajectory based stops is kind of a, um, related, makes sense. And then the next one is showing ATSPM showing 53% person, person arrival on red. Again, out of six, five made a stop, but these stops are much shorter than these stops, although there are five stops, okay? And then let's look at this one first, 51%, every vehicle stopped. So six out of six stopped. So you got 51%. It's also kind of makes sense. The one that is not consistent is this one. ATSPM is showing 30% person drive on rate. Although the trajectories, six out of six, all stop. So what is causing this inconsistency? Without further information, I really don't know, right? It's hard to tell what is behind this the inconsistency. But if I put the time space diagram along with the trajectories, and now it all makes sense. You look at the trajectories is the floating car starting from the first signal upstream. By the time the vehicle reached this location, it's already out of the green band. That's why every vehicle made a stop. But the ATSPM percent arrival on red is a link-based performance, right? You look at this is the upstream signal immediately to this subject intersection. Okay, so we're looking at this intersection. The upstream signal green actually starts here. This is a major intersection, so there's no early return. So green always start at this point. So you can imagine there's a big platoon there, a bunch of vehicles in the queue travel as a platoon. The downstream signal green actually starts here. So by the time the platoon gets there, there's no queue, the queue already cleared. All those vehicles will go through. So it makes sense. ATSPM re reported lower person arrival on red, even though the trajectories showing every vehicle stopped. Just to make it uh, uh, even clearer, um, you may not, you know, the time space diagram, the earlier one may not be uh, clear enough. So this is the subject the intersection we look at, 30% drive on red. This is the platoon I was talking about, starting upstream. So all these vehicles will go through. That's why that is low. But the trajectories from upstream, by the time they get here, you are going to see is going to be out of the band. So showing a video. So passing through this intersection, no problem. Now you see it's out of the band. So by the time the vehicle gets there, the phase is going to terminate. Okay, in 15 seconds, you are going to see a yellow. Okay, so barely, uh, unless you really, really uh, run, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to go through. So all these vehicles coming from upstream will stop here. Okay, so th this is the uh, one thing I noticed, you know, um, combining the time space diagram, the vehicle trajectories, and the person arrival on red will give you a much better picture of what's happening. What the, the arterial uh, has been retimed. So this is after retiming. Now you see everything in, is improved. So there, I want to focus in on these two intersections. So I want to enlarge these two. Okay. ATSPM reported 27% low, low number. And it makes sense because upstream signal starts here. So the platoon will go through. But if you, the floating car, the trajectories from the first signal, some went through. If you 
couldn't make through this intersection, you are going to make two stops. Now this, why this is a 32% upstream signal starts here, right? So there's a small platoon here. By the time they, it gets to this intersection, they all stop. That's why this number is high. So another case, right? Well, this is the PM. I uh, just want to show the PM timing plan is a lot better. And we look at uh, what happened in 2020, uh, November, December, that it was really during the peak of the pandemic and the performance. Um, the timing was uh, was running coordination. You see the trajectories are matched pretty well. And this is a score. You get uh, A minus. And then we also look at the data in 2022. Again, it's still pretty good, but you get uh, a B plus. Very close, right? Very close. But obviously 2022, uh, March 2022, the volume should be a lot higher than 2020. So maybe that's a little bit uh, degradation uh, of the score. So the last of case I want to show is, uh, I look at the side street, look at the side street, again, compare the trajectory based stop and uh, what is ATSPM reported. Look at the two major crossing arterials. They're all also coordinated, well coordinated. And unfortunately, the southbound, there's no data. The detector is probably not working. Only the northbound for this, uh, yeah, this intersection. ATSPM reported 46% percent arrival on red versus the trajectory, visual trajectory reported 20%. Okay, please notice the difference. The visual trajectory, we look at the vehicles coming from upstream through movement. How many of them actually made it through? You can see the majority made it through. That's why you see a lower percent uh, stop, okay? Only those you know, start earlier or later, they get stopped, but the majority went through. When we do signal coordination, this is really what we care the most, right? The major street through, we want to see how this movement progresses through the next signal. Now, kind of enlarge a little bit of this, what's happening. So think about it. The two signals, the spacing is about 2,000 square feet. It's a long spacing. Okay, what's happening between these two signals? There's actually two little streets there. But ATSPM, when we report personal arrival on red, we re rely on advanced detectors placed at about 400 feet upstream. So it's probably somewhere here. So therefore, ATSPM reported actually includes all these movements, not only the main street through, okay, the side street traffic, and also at the signal, the left turns, right turns is also included because the detector cannot really differentiate these movements, right? Versus the trajectory base, we only look at the through, how this through movement will progress through. And this is what we care the most uh, when we do signal timing. You know, these are the movements, you know, when we do signal timing, that's not the major focus. Uh, typically. So this is where it caused the difference. Uh, that on the, you know, this is a similar case. Uh, another crossing major, major crossing arterial. Uh, in this case, again, this detector northbound is not working, was not working. So southbound reported ATSBM 47%, Weijo uh, 35% person, person uh, stop. And you look at the trajectories, okay? It all makes sense. The majority went through fine, but for the few vehicles leave left upstream signal earlier, <coughs> will get stopped downstream, okay? At this, you know, between these two intersections, there's only one minor street there, okay? But regardless, so these, you know, uh, traffic from the side street 
making right and left is all reported by the ATSPM, by the advanced detector. So this is probably where it's causing the difference. I think with this, uh, I, I'm hoping I'm still within time. So quick summary, um, talked about the two types of ATSPM. One is uh, called detector face based. The other is called trajectory based. Currently, um, you know, we really don't have a widely accepted performance measure. You know, what is considered good, what is considered not so good. We don't have anything, or maybe I'm not, I'm not aware of that. So third point is a combination of percent arrival on red from ATSPM, vehicle trajectories, and the time space diagram can reveal a much better picture of signal coordination. So I'm excited to hear uh, version five of the ATSPM will have a time space diagram. But you, the two cases, both uh, trajectory, you know, trajectory based stops showed lower than those reported by ATSPM, the percent arrival on red. I already explained the reason. Uh, one is only looking at the major street through versus the detector records all the movements coming from the side street as well. So this is, could cause the difference. Uh, lastly, I, I want to keep this in a kind of open-ended question. So it goes back to the earlier, you know, is regardless what system, right? Whether ATSPM or other trajectory based or detector based, always keep in mind our ultimate goal is to improve our corridor operations. So it goes back to the earlier question is ATSPM will accomplish that goal. Okay, so this is something I, I, I let you to think about it. Um, I don't use ATSPM that often. So I cannot claim that I know, that I know everything about ATSPM. So if anybody is waiting to share, you know, we use ATS, ATSPM and to successfully retime our signals without using any additional other tools. So I'd like to hear uh, your experience on that. So with that, we have 10 minutes and uh, that's all I, I want to present. All right, thanks Tian. Uh, great presentation and, and um, I think this is a great way to enhance what we're doing with ATSPM. Um, there are a couple questions in the chat pod, but I, I guess I always get to go first because I'm the host, right? So um, I had a question about the Weijo data and then sort of the process to get to, um, I guess it's it's uh, integrating the Weijo data and the time space diagram using the STEP program. And when you made the comparisons to percent arrival on red versus the Weijo data, um, and those numbers were different. So it sounds like you are isolating your Weijo data on the corridor to only through vehicles. So you're now counting the vehicles that are making the sort of the internal movements from the right and the left turns. Is that, is that correct? That is right. Uh, I, yeah, that is right. I mentioned if we, 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 when we work on signal coordination, the through, the, the movement coming from the upstream through and whether they can go through or, next one or not. So this is usually our focus, right? Um, then if you got in the mid block turning vehicles uh, or the vehicles coming from the side street, unless it's a, it's a freeway off ramp, we, pro we want to progress the left turn, but rarely we do that. We, our coordination is pretty much based on the through. That's the reason I only extracted the through. Yeah, and I, I think what this does, and there's some questions related to split failures, because this sort of calls into question, like the definition of a split failure or phase failure means that the vehicles would have to be waiting before that vehicle began to be served. And so you also have split failures that are in there. And so George, uh, or Matt, George, Matthews George, um, he said, can trajectory data accurately predict 
split failures. So can you predict a split failure with trajectory data? Well, split failure, you know, uh, this is how I define it. We, I don't particularly call it a split failure. I call it a bottleneck. Okay, basically if a trajectory you see in the same cycle couldn't go through, basically you make two stops, right? You make a stop, join the queue, and by, by the end of the green, you couldn't go through. You make you made multiple stops at one particular intersection approach. That's an indication of a split failure. Basically, there's not enough capacity to clear that queue. So similar, I think it's similar concept. The trajectory will show that. Uh, I don't know among all of these, obviously the, maybe there, yeah, there's one here. You can see, if you can see this trajectory stopped here way back and then slowly start to move ah, right. so and again, right. and then, yeah. So that's the uh, split failure. There are a couple, there are a couple of them. Um, so you have to look at it, what a percentage during what time period, the trajectory will tell you the time because we know exactly when it happened. Minute, second, the date, we have that information exactly. Okay. All right, so let's get some other questions here. So David Sadavar with Purdue, he says, how do you obtain the time space diagram for the uh, for the arterials? Where are you getting the TSD data from? Okay, um, keep in mind, okay, the time space diagram I'm showing here, I, I already mentioned this, right? This is not uh, the actual, what, 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 what happened in the field. This is the timing plan you developed. So you, we have to assume everything goes to max. But regardless, there's one fixed point. The end of the coordinate phase is a fixed point, right? So that's a fixed point. This is how we align the trajectories on top of the time space diagram. So we know the trajectory, the time step, and then we know the location and the time space diagram. Uh, basically, if you know your offset, you know, what's supposed to be the time within the cycle. So this, this is not automatic. It requires another program. And um, yet we have another program. I don't think I'm, so, uh, I'm, so, you know, I'm, I'm not supposed to talk about our software. Okay, if you want, want to dis have further discussion, you can send me an email. I can tell you exactly how we did it. So it's not it's not a direct process. You have to use another, basically, a software to be able to plot this kind, make these kind of plots. Okay, and I think Brian has a question related to this this Weijo data topic. So, basic says you could consider the mid block entries or upstream turning movements if you wanted to. Correct? You're just basically filtering those out. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Because when we extract a trajectory, I can select from where is the starting point? We can define precisely, I want 400 feet, I want from the upstream signal, we can define that range, definitely. Okay. Maybe that's a good case. You know, if I select the location at the, exactly where the detector is located to see whether they are the same. Right. Okay, and then Patrick uh, Mahidi makes a comment. He says, en Enrix does estimate split failure having multiple stops at an intersection. So that's a definition um, within NREX for I guess how a split failure is estimated. And then Mark Taylor has a comment. He says, Dr. Tian, I agree that ATSPM arrival on green should not be used for conditions if the cues extend past the advanced detector as detector-based estimations tend to overestimate arrival on green since these vehicles are detected during the green but may stop before or after. And then he says, great job on the presentation. So. I think he's Thank agreeing. Um, yeah, but yeah, so certainly we're having some issues if, if we get into the congestive regime and we have queues, um, definitely arrival on green becomes a measure that's not very useful under congested conditions. All right, so that's it for the questions. There are, if there are other questions, please put them in the chat pod. And Dr. Tien, if you can, um, I guess, look at the chat and if you see any additional questions, if you wanna put a response there, and if you want to put your contact information in the chat pod, um, that way people can reach out to you and get in touch with you. Okay, so uh, um, chat, uh, this is my email. 
Okay. All right. And while you're doing that, there are a couple of questions related to version oh. 5.0. Um, so let's go to those. So uh, I guess, Mark, if you're on, if you want to give us a quick update on, I know 4.3 is available. There was a question about if folks had installed 4.3. It sounds like there might be an issue or two posted in GitHub. Uh, so maybe just tell us what's going on with 4.3 and anticipated release time for version 5. Yeah, um, Eddie, this is Mark. I am here if you're hearing me okay. Um, in regards to version 5.0, we just don't know when that will be out. The developers are working on it. And if it was anything like version 4.3, 4 I am going to be very careful giving a date because it was much longer than I thought it would be. Um, but I just don't know when version 5.0 will be out. In regards to the issues with people installing version 4.3, I saw some stuff on GitHub about that, comments back and forth, but I haven't really dived into what those are. I know that Dave Bassett's on the call here. Dave, I'm not sure if you have any feedback. Um, we are currently working on the comments. Uh, I'll act, currently actively working on comments. Uh, it looks like um, Ken was able to get up. That's the only comments that we know of specifically on 4.3. One of the big things that we need to make sure that we do when you're posting comments is just make sure you put in what version you're upgrading from. Uh, that because obviously when we do our testing and stuff like that, we, we can only test so many versions. And we do know there's a number of people throughout the uh, industry or who are still working on various versions of that. And of course, as we're promoting right now is to move towards uh, 4.3 so that it's going to be easier to upgrade to 5.0 when that's actually rolled out. We know that a lot of people will be trying to do that. So we don't know if these bugs are direct, uh, are directly due to uh, you know what, what version we're moving from or uh, specific configurations, but we are trying to work on those from a, a very specific time-to-time uh, -time basis. Uh, and uh, and whatnot. So, and of course, you know, best place to do it is GitHub, but uh, I can post my email on there if there's uh, any any need to, if you're not getting the feedback that you want. Uh, this is uh, Ken Young from AECOM. I, I did try the version uh, 4.3, but I did a uh, uh, brand new installation, but it's always filled in the middle of uh, database creation. So, I did look at the code. I posted like the one on the issues, like the, the, the nearest one. Uh, and there's uh, one of the duplication to set up a table uh, column. I kind of, the first one, I kind of recompile my version and it did pass through for the brand new installation, but there's still issues there. It's like your installation manual did mention there's a couple of uh, storage procedures and functions should be staying in the database, but uh, in my installation, they're not showing up there. That's my question. Is, is that the, the issues with the manual or issues with the, uh, the, the, the my installation, so? Uh, yeah, as I said, we're currently actively looking at your comments, so I don't we don't have an answer for it, um, but I am putting my uh, uh, email address in the chat. So we can reach out directly with you to get a little bit more information uh, so that we know that we are uh, um, addressing that specifically. Sure, thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, any other questions related to 4.3? All right, and thanks David for putting your uh, contact there. All right, so as we were talking, I was thinking about these recordings and I thought, hey, maybe GitHub's a good place to start posting the links to the recordings. And so I actually did that. So I'm gonna start putting the links to the monthly call in a discussion on GitHub. So hopefully that'll sort of drive folks to the site there anyway. Um, but if you go under discussions, um, I created a new one, it's ATSPM monthly call recordings. And so I will just add the prior calls back through March to this, and then all future calls, including the one today, I will drop onto GitHub if you wanna access the uh, recording. And I put a link there, but if you go into GitHub, you have an account, you can set one up. If you don't, 
and that will give you the ability to go in and get the uh, recording so that I don't have to respond to, you know, 20 emails every month with people asking for the for the link. So I think that solves that problem. Thanks, Sasha. All right. So with that, um, if there are no additional questions, um, let me say thank you to Dr. Tian for his presentation today. Um, we appreciate your time and sharing that information. This, all of this is sort of moving this technology forward and helping us to do a better job at using ATSPM to actively manage signal systems, which, which effectively is the goal I think we're all trying to get to. Um, so with that, thanks everyone for joining the call. Again, our next call will be on, oh, let me make sure the date. I think it's September 20, let me make sure. September 26th, that'll be Dover, New Hampshire, and we'll be talking about ATSPM implementation and workflows uh, to support active operations. And that will be Curtis Thompson with Sebago Technics. All right, thank you everyone. And we will talk to you again next month. And with that, the meeting is now adjourned. Thanks everyone, see you next month. Thank you, Eddie. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Nice.